Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. In this video, we look into the physiologic movement of the teeth or stages of tooth eruption. Before you proceed with this video, I highly recommend watching three of my previous videos that cover tooth formation in detail. You'll get to learn some basic concepts and terms that will help you learn today's topic much more easily. So let's begin. Eruption is the physiological process whereby teeth move from their developmental positions within the jaw bones to emerge into the oral cavity and establish functional occlusion with teeth in the opposing arch. It is a lifelong continuous process that can be described into three main phases. These are the pre-eruptive, eruptive and the post-eruptive stages. The stages apply to both primary and permanent dentition. Let's look into the sequence of events happening in all these three stages of tooth eruption in detail. The pre-eruptive stage involves the initial positioning and alignment of teeth germs within the jaw bones so they can prepare for eruption. It is considered as the constant movement of the tooth germs and their crypts or developing bony sockets within the growing jaws. It involves all movements of primary and permanent tooth germs from the time of their early initiation and formation when they are too small to the time of their crown completion when they are considerably larger. As the tooth germs increase in their size, the jaws also have to grow. This causes the primary anterior tooth germs to move forward and the primary second molar tooth germ to move backward. The differential movement of the anterior and posterior tooth germs is important as the much bigger sizes of the future permanent dentition require an extra space where they can erupt in a well-aligned position. This is why teeth germs have to move back and forth and prepare themselves to fit in the right position later. Looking at the position of the tooth germs, the permanent tooth germs initially lie lingual to the primary tooth germs in the same bony socket or bony crypt. As the jaws grow further, the tooth germs for the permanent canine and incisors occupy individual bony crypts and are positioned at the root levels of the primary teeth. The permanent tooth germs of the premolars which have formed its bony crypt now lie between the divergent roots of the primary molars. And the permanent molar which has no predecessor arises from the distal extension of the dental lamina and possesses a mesially inclined position in the lower jaw while a distally inclined position in the upper jaw. These permanent molar tooth germs in the upper and lower jaws straighten as the jaws grow further and sufficient room is provided to them. The pre-eruptive movements of teeth that place the teeth germs in a position within the jaws for eruption are a combination of two factors, that is bodily movement and eccentric growth of the tooth germs. Let's look into both of them. The bodily movement or total bodily movement is the movement of the tooth germ as a whole along with its bony crypt. Let's suppose a tooth germ has to move in a mesial direction. During bodily movement of a tooth germ in this mesial direction, bone resorption by osteoclasts occurs on the mesial surface of the crypt wall, while bone deposition occurs by osteoblasts on the distal wall as a filling in process. In eccentric growth, one part of the tooth germ remains fixed while the rest continues to grow. During eccentric growth, only bony resorption occurs thus altering the shape of the crypt to accommodate the altering shape of the tooth germ. For example, after the crown of a tooth is completely formed, root initiation and elongation start. Yet the crown does not increase in size and it maintains a constant relationship with the surrounding alveolar bone. To accommodate the growing root of this tooth, bone resorption must take place. It's worth mentioning that the length of the alveolar bone will also increase so that it can compensate for the growing roots of the tooth. In a nutshell, pre-eruptive tooth movements are intricate processes that involve constant adjustments within the developing jaws ensuring optimal alignment and preparation for eventual tooth eruption into the oral cavity. 
In the next part of this video, we'll look into the eruptive and post-eruptive teeth movements. Stay tuned by subscribing to the channel and clicking on the bell icon for a notification each time a new video is uploaded. For questions and suggestions, you may use the comment box below. Thank you for watching.